Welcome back to Darkwood. After having, I think, failed at the underground entrance in the radio tower, our only way out now seems to be the village tree that we burned down. I've got everything with me that I could possibly want, that I can possibly fit on me, assuming we're never coming back here, which seems to be a safe assumption. Let's go. I hope I don't end up with a bullet to the head, like all the others. Whoa. Here we go. <laughs> Something's happening. Is time still going? No, time's frozen. No map. Okay. I wonder if the old man went through here. Well, I'm scared. A colorless goo sips from the cracks in the asphalt. Is this the road? The road home? that over there? This looks like a... Is that a map? Oh, it's a sign. Torches. So I'm fine on light. The crossed out sign reads Dark Wood. Oh god. Oh, that's... the old man? Who's that? It's the old man from the village. Trying to crawl the hell out of here. I would too. Now I really wish I found them wheels. I, can you find them wheels? I mean, if they give you the quest, you probably can. Because then they could probably not have to crawl out here. The road home. Can I help them? It doesn't seem like it. Look at all these people. It looks like they were going home and then they got... Absorbed. Frozen. Is that going to happen to me too? I kind of want to stay with them. I feel like we're on this journey together. I'll make sure not to go too make sure not to go too far. Some of these people look like they crawled before they got frozen. Others were just walking. Almost just like they were frozen in time.
Come on, you can do it. I really wish I could help them. <laughs> It's getting darker and darker as I go. I'm gonna wait for them. Whoa, they stopped? Are they just tired? Or are they frozen? They don't look different. I think they're okay. Oh, I really want to accompany them. I guess not. Alright. This can't be a good ending. There's no way. There's no way. Twenty-five kilometers to the nearest town. It's a hell of a walk. What's down here? Oh, is this the end of the road here? Okay, detour. This is getting more and more narrow. This can't be good. This can't be the way out. No inventory, nothing. Listen to that sound. Power line? Well, maybe things aren't hopeless. Wish 
way do I go? It's so, so open here. The forest just ended. Follow the power lines one way, I guess. I love the 3D effect of the power lines. Can everything actually be okay? I don't know why the ground seems to keep glitching out every once in a while. It's never happened before. Perhaps I should go to the right? Try the right. A building. It's a person. If I have actually found civilization, then my next question is... How am I going to be received? Since I am apparently a monster. Who's going to eat the bread now? Can't talk with them. But they didn't recoil in horror. This definitely isn't normal, right? I'm hearing... Oh, I'm hearing the sounds of people. Fuck. Sounds really disturbing, though. And there's, like, only one person here? Something's wrong. Hopscotch, I never understood it. What the hell am I hearing? Neighbor. My first floor neighbor. Good day. Good day to you. What's happening? Oh. Wanna walk closer to here? It gets stark? It does. My first floor neighbor? It's weird, everything's like... Repeated again and again. If I keep going up, I just keep reaching the same place, although the person isn't there anymore, weirdly enough. This is my staircase. Oh. Uh, there's someone twitching on the ground over there. That's not good. Wish I knew what that said. It's been here since I remember. Weird that no one ever tried to steal it. Elevator. Doesn't work, as always. What's this? Probably the work of that little punk from the third floor. Someone finally evicted them. So is this where I used to live? The place is a shithole. Boss. Got any spare change? 
No? Sorry. I guess they're not a monster. Maybe. I don't know. Twitching bodies on the ground definitely don't make me comfortable. Let's go upstairs. Wait. You're waking my head? Get the- uh, Waking my kid? Get the hell away? What? What the fuck is that? What the fuck was that on the floor? Stupid cow. This is some sort of nightmarish return to normalcy. Pleased to see you, mister. Haven't seen you in a while. They're still green, even though I've never seen anyone tending to them. Maybe they feed on the discarded cigarette butts? Probably the work of the kid from a neighboring apartment block. Blocked from the other side. Oh. I have a key. I guess this is my apartment? What is going on? Home sweet home. I think I remember this home from the vision, right? One of the visions we had when I was taking a dose of the essence stuff. It's my wardrobe. Take off your coat. Leave. Uh, sure, take off my coat. Yeah, that's what I was wearing in the vision. Didn't I answer the door and like me with the coat on was on the other side or something? I don't remember exactly. Is my wife here? The Frania washing machine. It's I spent two days in the queue to get it. I'm barely standing on my feet. I'll take a bath tomorrow. Some note is lying on the table. I've made you some soup. Heat it up. The old trusty gas stove. Still some soup in the pot. <laughs> Turn it on. I guess echoing what we do at the hideouts. Turning on the stove to protect us. Sure, turn it on. Smell fills the entire kitchen. Cook? Sure. I grab the largest dish from the closet under the sink and pour myself a bowl. It's not much, but it's enough. I don't remember the last time I've eaten a home dinner. Doggy. A doggy that I don't have to kill. Good boy. Oh. I'm very tired. I prefer to lie down in a regular bed. Black and white Reuben, real luxury. Unfortunately, it's broken. 
flashlight and a battery. Okay, I don't have an inventory though. I don't. Yeah, I don't think this stuff matters. Oh, bedroom key. my bed. The white crumpled sheets look as if I've just woken up. At last. I feel my sore legs buckling underneath me, my body becoming heavy and overwhelmingly lethargic. It was a grueling journey. Forty-two days of human torment. This is not right. Go to sleep. With my last strength, I stop myself from falling asleep. Something forces me to move away from the bed. Did I forget to do something? Uh, is there anything else I can do? Can I go back outside? Don't want to leave my apartment. No. Ate food, pet my dog. Pet the dog again. Hmm. Go to sleep. As the dating warmth washes over me, a warmth of security and happiness. I feel like this is maybe what's happening to me. Ooh. The rustle of the woods stretching away to the horizon kept the stranger awake for a long time. Eventually, fatigue washed over him, and the man fell into a deep, much desired dream. Burning the tree opened the road home for many anguished inhabitants of the forest. Only three outcasts dressed in old rags and scraps lamented over its charred remains. The woman living with the chickens left her hut and journeyed into the forest in search of her missing sister. Since then, the chicken lady's house is inhabited only by wild poultry. The boy with the violin came back to the silo. He threw away his gramophone and his violin. He started to listen to the hum of the forest, which calmed his scattered thoughts. Piatrek rose above the treetops in his rocket made out of scrap. He smiled as, peeking through the small plastic window of his spaceship, he saw the Milky Way stars moving away at huge speed. The barricaded cottage at the swamp became a prison for the three children. The oldest boy, kept locked in his room following his escape attempt, would long remember his only journey through the woods and the visit in the house overgrown with white mushrooms. Oh God.
So that's the end, huh? There must be more going on. There has to be. Okay, so I did some googling on the other endings. There are apparently three different endings. And yes, the whole thing I did with the radio tower is one of them. But there's another ending that you can get in your apartment building. Apparently if you do like a sequence of things and you like really dig deep into how strange things are... Oh my god, those noises are disturbing. If you like really look around at more stuff, you can find some things that aren't right. More than just like the fetus, that was like the tip of the iceberg that I found when I got the first ending. But you can find some other stuff apparently, and I've got a list of the things you need to do to do it. But I'm gonna try to just see if I can do it on my own and then consult the list if need be. I know one of the things I said is I need to like get a postcard, check my mail, so let's see if I can find that. Ah, mailbox. Mine's located opposite the basement stairs. I think there's something inside. Postcard from my parents. I'll read it later. Yeah, and there's also a basement here. Ooh. Just endless locked doors. Oh. Potato sacks. Canned jars. Jar of jam. Switch on the radio. <laughs> oh. Is there something down here with me? It said sleep. See, it wants me to sleep. That's I knew it. The sleeping thing is like definitely obviously fake. It's not real. It's the forest wanting me to sleep so it can take over me. Ah, oh, okay. Figure I should just run for it. Make it easier on myself. Okay, so I know we need to look at the fetus. Do I just wait here, or do I need to, like... Okay. Look at that! <laughs> okay. Um, let's just make sure I'm not missing anything here. So search the mailbox. I'm looking at the list. It says, grab the jar of mushroom jelly. Oh, that was mushroom jelly? It didn't translate the name, so I wasn't sure. Look at the fetus. Okay, after that I've got to go to my apartment. Okay. Then we need to look around closely and I think move some furniture. What 
if I go down, by the way? Anything down here? Apparently someone was too lazy to bring it down the stairs and throw it in the trash. They're still green, even though I've never seen anyone tending to them. Oh, same as the other flowers. By the way, this ending is called Burn Them All. Burn Them All. Eh, I guess I'll leave on my coat. Oh, I need to change, okay. So yeah, I need to look around. Let's make sure we check everything. Move stuff if I can move it. I don't think there's any reason to make the soup. I can't imagine that's part of it. Hey, buddy. I don't know, I guess I'll take everything. I don't think it matters. Pretty tired. Oh yeah, so this is the one I can drag, so let's move that. Yeah, hmm. Some roots there. Oh, now that I look at it, it looks like there's roots beneath the TV. Oh, I can move that too. Whoops. Oh, I can move like all of this. These roots are growing out from under the floor panels. Remove. Won't be able to tear the floor off with my bare hands. There should be some tools in the kitchen. Tools. A cupboard under the sink. Search. Large screwdriver. Excellent. Yeah, now that I look, I even see roots under the stove, under everything. flooring. Follow the roots. Hmm. Holy shit, this is so creepy. I hear the beat of the forest now. bugs under here. Now I think it said something about the bed. Examine your bed, look under it, and then it says do not click leave or you will sleep. So apparently I need to be careful. Look closer. Right, look under it. Yeah, look closer. Fighting off sleepiness with difficulty, I lean over the bed. The springs creak noisily under the weight of my hand. 
As I cast my glance on the light brown construction from plywood, I notice familiar features. They are elongated and arched. I can still smell the fresh sheets and the pleasant warmth of the quilt. Look under the bed. I feel a gentle drought coming from the dark gap between the bed and the floor. Reach under the bed. My fingertips brush a thin layer of dust. Coldness. Moisture. I'm touching something rough, but my arm is too short to catch it. I think I need to move the bed. Move it. bugs are going into it, aren't they? Looked like I was completely naked. Sleeping man. More sleepers. Remember the sleeper in the forest? The man is fast asleep. He's smiling. He's hugging his knees with skinny, dirty arms. A swarm of flies is covering a black sore on his back. I can wake him up. So is this now reality? Have I escaped the dream that it tried to put me under? Sleeping woman. Dirty clumped hair covers the woman's face. She's murmur murmuring in her sleep, clutching a rag doll filled with straw. Now the moon has faded. The night is here. The sleep. Something over my doll? So close. Your eyes. I can wake them up too. Yeah, my hat. Whoa. So, uh... I wonder what happens when I wake them up. I'm gonna try that in a second. Old weathered clothes. Coat. It's torn and covered with dried mud. They're completely destroyed. The steep slope blocks the way ahead. There are some tunnels at its base. It's a meter wide tunnel covered with a slimy membrane. Further inside, I can see pulsating growths blocking the way ahead. I won't be able to pass through this way. Is that where it came from? Okay, I'm gonna try waking you up. The man doesn't react. I'm unable to wake him from his slumber. Doesn't react? Can't wake her either. I'm at the bottom of a huge valley. I feel the dry, dusty earth pulsating under my feet. Another sleeper. It hums something quietly in its sleep, swaying to the rhythm of a simple melody. <laughs> Shiny stone, fuck you. Dead asleep, unable to wake her up. Dead asleep, nice choice of words. Also humming a simple melody, that reminds me of the person humming a simple melody in the tree. Sleeping man looks like a skeleton coated in skin. He smiles widely. So many people. Sleeps on a muddy ground resting its head on the chest of the skeleton lying next to it. 
I'm not picking up these shiny stones. I hear a faint whisper. Stasiak, my little Stasiak. Sleep, Stasiak, sleep. Speaks to someone in its sleep, squeezing an old man's photo in its hand. The emaciated figure sleeps soundly, embracing the remains of a child. Everyone is just... being given pleasant dreams by the forest, but in reality they're just being used. Its face is covered in mud and sticks that clutches a shiny stone in its hand. They're asleep. They seem happy, even though they're emaciated and dirty. Some of them lie dead. Can I cross here? Yeah. The earth is covered with thick bundles of dry roots that creak under my feet, and old, broken trees. Pleasant warmth washes over me. Some people here kind of worshipping it. Most, though, are just sleeping or dead. Being. I'm standing in front of an enormous being. Place hand on the being. I feel an overwhelming, soothing feeling of security and happiness. The vast valley at the bottom of which I stand curves upwards, closing over my head. The rust of distant trees turns into a single silent murmur. I feel I'm coming home, to my flat, to my room with a window and a bed. So I think that's to give in back to the dream. Also, I think that meant to say rustle of distant trees, not rust, because I don't know what that would mean. Uh, withdraw. I feel a heat emanating from the being. I sense my pulse slowing down. A calmness. I want to rest, come back home to my bed. I want to lie down, to fall asleep. Withdraw. I don't want to do it. Still, my hand pushes the being away. The warmth that was emanating from it disappears, replaced by piercing coldness. Masiek. That's a familiar name, but I don't remember exactly who that is. The man mumbles in his sleep. He's emaciated and dirty, but his face is radiant and calm. He clutches a rusty object covered with old beads. Some weapon? Listen to the murmurs. The man is talking in his sleep. These are only snippets of sentences, single words spoken gently and slowly. It's hard to find any meaning in them. Push the figure. 
leave. Without opening his eyes, the man clumsily waves his hand at me, then covers his head with it and freezes. Try to take the, try to take the metal item from the man. Leave. The man waves his hand again. This time he grabs my arm. Without opening his eyes, he turns his head towards me. I recognize him. He's one of us. Another military person. Oh yeah, I see a dog tag right there, don't I? Yeah, so according to the wiki and of course the name of it, of the ending, Burn Them All. Uh, that's a flamethrower. Try to snatch it. Leave. Can you fucking hear me? I won't let you take her. A man clenches his teeth with the fury of a maniac. Saliva flows from his mouth. It's hurting her. You'll tear her arms out. I gotta hit them? Alright, hit the man and grab the item. Don't! Leave her! Oh, Jesus. No! Did I kill them? I mean, not with the flamethrower, but just with the punches? Uh. Clutches a muddy brass cross in both hands, repeating some incomprehensible words in its sleep. Well, I've got a flamethrower now. Oh, they're still alive. I beg you, give her to me. Oh, God. What are you doing? Give her back. Uh. Huge roots block the way. Even if I manage to climb them, everything is surrounded by a steep slope overgrown with thick roots. There's no way out. I'm just going to run past them. What are you doing? So yeah, name of the ending is Burn Them All. I'm just glancing over at the wiki. The final direction for what to do to get the ending is Burn Them All. Leave us alone. You'll kill us all. Can I burn the being? Oh Christ, they're still coming for me. You'll die with us. Everything's gonna burn, it's all wood.
great fire consumed the woods for a couple of days, gradually claiming many of its inhabitants. The fire consumed the last road leading to the heart of the woods. The three outcasts wearing old rags and scrap who, grief-stricken under the enormous, completely burned tree, didn't even attempt to run. The elephant family, who did not leave their house at the swamp even as the flames started consuming it. The chicken lady, who set out into the woods in search of her sister and lost the way. And the last living inhabitant of the flooded village consumed by the flames at the very end of the road leading home. But not everyone perished. The little musician hid in the old hut with the trapdoor leading to the underground tunnels. When the fire went out, the trapdoor opened and the boy left the woods. Piatrek did not live to see the fire. Before the flames appeared, he rose above the treetops in his rocket made of scrap. As he looked through the small spaceship window, he smiled for the last time. The Milky Way stars look so beautiful even now, when moving away at a huge speed. So oh, that was a hell of an ending, huh? My god. So according to the wiki, that was ending number two, burn them all. The first ending I got was ending number one. So that only leaves ending number three, which unfortunately I can't get because, as I said at the time when I went to the radio tower underground place, you only get one shot at it. And after reading what you need to do to get it, I am so just like, mm, I felt like I had done so much and gotten so far. and. I, like, I felt like I deserved whatever ending that was going to possibly give me. And I did. I only messed up the very, very, very final little step. Everything I did before that was perfect. Managing to make it all the way there. Even going into the mouth was actually correct, believe it or not. The problem was, I guess, how you go into the mouth? According to the instructions, it says you need to wait there for a second. In front of the person who's, like, praying in front of that giant mouth that opens. It says you have to wait there for a second, and then as soon as it opens, it says you have to run in. And you come out the other side. The mistake I made, I guess, is that... I guess I went in while the jaw was closing, and I need to go in, like, only right when it opens to make sure that it doesn't chomp down and, and bite me. So you just need to, like, make your way through it before it chomps down, I guess? That's, that's it. That's the only thing that was separating me from that ending. And I don't know what that ending is. Exactly. Uh, it says the third ending is obtainable by walking the path heading to the final dream scene. So it's just called the final dream scene. Oh, actually, the final dream scene, I think, is that entire sequence that I played, actually. I don't think that's, like, the name of the ending. Uh, yeah, you go in there. So it says you run through it. And then after that... You continue through the cave, and you'll find yourself in a small artificial tunnel. There's a shovel to the right. Use it to dig the rubble to your left and enter the door beyond. And it says at this point the dream sequence ends. You'll wake up again and can proceed through tunnel 21. Eventually, you'll reach one of several pairs of ladders which can be climbed. This will lead you to a secret area north of the road home. 
which has a few points of interest and several lore items that reveal more about the Darkwood setting. So it's very, it's very vague about exactly what happens. You go there, there's some letters, there's some things, there's some lore. It doesn't really say exactly what happens in that ending. Like, are you okay? Do you escape? It doesn't say. So I don't know what kind of an ending that would be exactly. I'm mad that I didn't get it because I so deserved it. Ah. Anyway. Yeah, so just some thoughts on Darkwood. Uh, Darkwood's incredible. Yeah, thanks everyone who urged me to play it and said that it was great. It's, it's freaking fantastic. Oh my god. It's so amazing. It's, uh, it's such an amazing treat, too, to know that this game that I backed years and years ago and it's been floating around early access and all of that, to know that it just came out and... and... it was amazing. You know, because cause most of the time when you back something, you forget about it, you go back to check it later, 99 times out of 100, it's, you know, it's okay or something, but this one was a hell of a gem. I guess I made the right decision backing it years ago. Holy crap, it's amazing. The overall feel of playing it and the setting and the enemies you encounter and the people you encounter and the things you find and all the little lore details just hidden throughout that paint enough of a picture to give you an idea, that give me an idea of like what is going on, sort of, kind of paints in little, little details, but it doesn't give me the full picture. Just enough to make it creepy as hell. This is the most unnerving and creepiest game that I think I've ever played in my entire life. It's so damn good. And almost everything about it is just expertly designed. The way your character controls and moves around feels fantastic. The, uh, the whole workbench upgrading thing to get kind of better weapons, but your weapons are never that good, and ammo is super limited, and, like, the way your inventory grows over time, and you gotta really, you gotta really, really think about what you put in your inventory slots, how much you leave open, how much you take with you, how much you don't. So it's got this inventory management thing, it's got this sort of, like, very light base building elements with the whole fortifying your own place and putting down explosives and things like that. And it's so unique with that, the, the day-night system. Running through the day, and remember for the first, like for a good chunk of the game in the beginning, I didn't even have a watch. I didn't even know what time it was until it was almost dark. The way that flows, like just not even knowing what time it is the most, is the most unnerving thing, because you know what the night brings. And then I finally get a watch, and then I can manage my time better, but... Then that just makes me make things go more down to the wire, and I end up coming home a couple minutes before nighttime, flipping on the generator. Oh, and the fact that you have to manage the uh, the gas for the generator, you know, if you forget to fill it, it doesn't turn on. If you accidentally leave it on, it runs out of gas. The enemies are... they just get more creepy and more dangerous the further you progress into the different hideouts. You know, to the silent forest, then the old woods, and then the swamp. The way there's all these just like onion layers of creepiness that just keep peeling off. There's always something new and creepy to find. I actually like the fact that it seems like, at least as far as I can tell, you can't open everything. Like not every door or locked chest is meant to be opened, it feels like. Because I left a lot of things undiscovered and unlocked. The creepy box and the church, the church basement. The wedding, and a million other th other things, and like I feel like it's on purpose to leave this kind of mystery and this sense of not being able to kind of conquer your world. You're never really in control, and that makes it really unnerving. You can't conquer the world, you can't pacify it, you can't just kill all the enemies and then you have a safe place to waltz around. You can't open every single locked thing and see what's behind it. You're always left wondering. It's so brilliantly designed. And I absolutely love the fact that when your day just starts, you get the time freeze until you leave the vicinity of your hideout and then time starts to tick down. That's such a great reprieve, because in horror it's really important to have both times of horrifying, stressful things happening, but also calm periods. Because having that, um, having that, that variance, that time to breathe, time to be scared, time to breathe, having it so you can release that pressure 
is really important because you get numb to the horror if it's just like constant horror and constantly running for your life all the time. You need some moments to breathe and think about what's happened so that the highs can, you know, the, the highs of scariness can feel higher rather than just being like one monotone, constant scary thing. So the time freeze is perfect for that. You know, you, go through the, you get through the horrible night and then you get that like crescendo of music leading up to the end of the day and then, ah, white light, new day, this immense sense of relief, you know that you're perfectly safe the next morning, nothing bad can happen to you at that point. You don't have to rush anything. You can take your time and just pick up the pieces of everything that went horribly wrong during the night and bandage yourself up and repair the windows and get your inventory into shape and plan out what you want to do for the day. Like that's such a wonderful kind of uh, flow to it, to the game. It felt really good, like really, really good. So to finish off, I just want to think about the two endings. So the first ending is, I guess, it looks like you go home, but in reality, I guess you just walk into the forest and the being, as we saw in the other ending, takes you into its embrace and makes you feel warm and happy and don't look too hard at the creepy fetus through the door or anything like that. You want to go to sleep. Just go to sleep and rest. Become a sleeper. And then you go to sleep and I think it just feeds off you. The being seems to be the core at the, the heart of the forest. It seems to be the heart of everything that happens. Perhaps that's the voice that people talk about hearing. Hearing her voice calling, maybe that's the being. And it just sucks you dry over time, I guess, while you go into your dream and have nice thoughts. While it drains your nutrients and uses it to make more trees and more beings and more things spread its reach. That seems to be the first ending. The second one, Burn It All seems to be when you go into the dream, so the being kind of has you in its embrace, but you start to poke and prod at the edges of the dream and notice what's wrong. And you overcome that incredible urge to sleep, somehow. And you go down the hole, which is apparently the hole to consciousness, and you wake up. Naked, clothes discarded on the ground, amongst hundreds of other naked sleepers, or some are sleeping, some are writhing, some are dead. All of them lost in their own thoughts of their family, clutching photos and shiny stones. And then you burn it all. You grab that flamethrower from one of the soldiers, because you are also a soldier yourself, and whoever you are, I'm not sure your exact name, but you say they, re you know, they recognize Masiek as another person from the army. Take the flamethrower and set everything on fire. All the dreamers, all the trees, the being. You kill the forest and it takes days for the entire forest to burn down because it's so huge. And then it does and I guess it's gone. And some of the people in the forest survived as it said at the end. Like the little musician. So they left the forest after coming out of the underground tunnels. So is there actually a world outside of the dark woods? I guess. If it said that the little musician left the woods after it burned down, I guess there is a world outside. I imagine the forest must be growing bigger and bigger, right? But I know the military hasn't been in, in this place for years, it seems like. So I wonder if the military is still trying to manage it at all, and they just can't get deep into it anymore, or what? I don't know. I'm just really curious what the outside world is like. And the third ending, I have no idea. Alright. Well, that has been Darkwood, an absolutely incredible game. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and thanks for watching.